dogs carry the deadly bacteria in their mouths, Capnicitophaga, that humans do not carry, and should not come into contact with. But dogs also carry many other dangerous pathogens that humans should not come into contact with, including several parasites. Parasites have been with us forever, but it is only in recent history that we have discovered very much about them. We have had pet cats for about 10 to 12,000 years, but we only discovered one of the parasites that they may carry, Toxoplasma gondii, in 1908. So, you can see that we had cats for far longer than we were aware that they could be exposing us to a dangerous parasite. It wasn't until 1939 that we discovered T. gondii in the tissues of a congenitally deformed infant, and it wasn't until 1970 that we discovered its life cycle, that its natural host is the cat, and infected cats excrete eggs that are extremely environmentally resistant. Any other warm-blooded animal, including humans, can accidentally ingest toxoplasma eggs, and become an intermediate, paratenic, host. Parasites have not received much media attention over the years. Mostly, people didn't worry about them, and just assumed they would never get one. That parasites only exist in the tropics, or assumed, wrongly, that they would know if they had a parasitic infection. But recently, there has been some interest in T. gondii in the popular media. Suddenly they have something exciting to report, that one third of the world's population is probably infected with T. gondii, and contrary to what was previously thought, it may be affecting us in various ways. Until recently, it was thought that toxoplasmosis was only a risk to pregnant women. If you get toxoplasmosis for the first time while pregnant, it can be passed to, and severely harm, the baby. The only other high-risk group was thought to be people who were immunocompromised. It was believed that in the majority of people, the infection was asymptomatic, or very mild, and went away on its own after a few weeks. In 2003, the Merck Manual stated that toxoplasmos is acquired after birth in otherwise healthy people seldom causes symptoms. When symptoms do occur, they are usually mild and include painless, swollen lymph nodes, intermittent low fevers, and a vague ill feeling. People with a weakened immune system, primarily those with cancer, AIDS, or who have had an organ transplant and are taking drugs to suppress rejection, can get symptoms of toxoplasmosis from a reactivated previously acquired infection. We now know that many of us have latent toxoplasma cysts in our brains that can reactivate later in our lives, when our immunity goes down. Eventually as we get older, all of us will have a weaker immune system. Do you realize that modern medicine has not really accomplished very much? Most people try not to think of the dread diseases that they could get, and sometimes think that modern medicine will somehow be able to save them if they get sick. The reality is that we don't have a cure for most diseases, and we have not even figured out the cause for most of them. We don't know why these diseases start. Sometimes we know what is happening, for example, that plaques are forming in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, but we don't know why it started happening. But we now have linked reactivated toxoplasma with Lou Gehrig's disease, schizophrenia, epilepsy, bipolar depression, memory impairment, Alzheimer's, and autism. T. gondii infection has also been linked with road rage, fearless behavior, self-harm, suicide, increased aggression, and sociopathy. When I tried to research why latent, reactivated toxoplasma could be having all of these effects on humans I couldn't find any specific chemical reason or mechanism other than the fact that the insisted parasite is a foreign invader which triggers an inflammatory response and damages our brains. If you get a benign, non-cancerous tumor in some areas of the body, it won't cause any harm. 
For example, if you have a benign lump in your breast, it will not cause any harm or cause any problems with your functioning because it has plenty of room, and the breast is not the control center of your entire body. However, even a benign tumor in your brain can have devastating consequences. Even a non-cancerous thing sitting in your brain is going to cause severe symptoms and impairment. Your brain controls every single part of your body. You need your brain to live. If there is a mass in the brain, it will push other brain tissue out of the way, and, with your skull protecting your brain, the tissue has nowhere to go, unlike in some other areas of your body. So, even a benign mass in the brain is not something we can afford to have. One disease that is deadly, and has no known risk factors or known cause, is brain cancer. But it has recently also been linked to toxoplasma infection. The blood-brain barrier stops some toxins from entering the brain, including, unfortunately, the chemo needed to fight it, but parasites manage to get past it, most likely by sneaking in inside a white blood cell. So it seems that not only can a parasitic invader to the brain cause neurological problems and brain damage, it can be a factor in triggering actual cancer to develop. Researchers have begun attempting to treat brain cancer with anti-parasitic drugs. I wonder why a drug that works on parasites also works on brain tumors. So, recently, Toxoplasma, the mind-controlling parasite, has made headlines after being ignored for many years. Cats are its natural host, and other warm-blooded animals, such as dogs, can get it, and it can affect them, although it would not be in their feces, like cats, humans don't get toxoplasma from dog feces. Wolves who are infected with toxoplasma are 46 times more likely to become pack leaders. They make more daring decisions, take more risks, and are 11 times more likely to leave their pack. Wolves, and dogs, are intermediate hosts of toxoplasma, as are humans. Maybe this serves a purpose in nature, with wild animals, causing them to leave their group to find new territory and new mates. It also causes mice to lose their fear of cats, and even be attracted to cat urine, which is good for T. gondii and cats, but not so good for mice. This may serve a purpose in the natural world but I'm not sure I'm happy that one third to one half of the world's population has latent toxoplasmoses. So, recently the public has become aware of toxoplasmoses because it made exciting headlines for being a mind-controlling parasite we get from cats and undercooked meat, that has infected possibly half of the world's population, and has been linked to many conditions, from road rage, aggression, being an entrepreneur, a supposedly good effect among all of the bad ones, supposedly because it makes people fearless and more aggressive, to cancer, and many neurological degenerative diseases. Far beyond what was previously thought. Previously, we thought it was only a danger if a mother acquired toxoplasmosis for the first time while pregnant, and pregnant mothers were advised to avoid cleaning the litter box for this reason. In years past, we just weren't talking about it. The reason I discussed toxoplasma, which we don't get from dogs, is because only now are we discovering all of the effects it is having on us, how widespread it is, and how damaging it can be to get infected with a zoonotic parasite that is capable of getting into our brains. There is another parasite you need to know about, with a similar sounding name, Toxocaracanus, that dogs are the primary hosts of, that they excrete in their feces, that no one is talking about. Everyone knows dogs get worms, but it hasn't yet made the news headlines to get everyone talking about it. Everyone just assumes there is nothing to worry about, and that they don't affect us. The truth is that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has designated Toxocaraises 
along with toxoplasma and a few others, as one of five neglected parasitic infections requiring urgent attention. One article stated that although infection with toxocara can cause devastating disease, in humans, the burden of toxocariasis in the United States remains unknown. Toxocara canis is one of the most widespread public health zoonotic infections people share with dogs. Many symptomatic infections go undiagnosed. It has been targeted as a priority for public health action, although it doesn't seem like anyone is doing much about it. If toxoplasma infection can lay dormant in cysts in your brain, lungs, or muscle tissue, only to be reactivated later in life when your immunity goes down, contributing to a multitude of devastating neurodegenerative diseases, psychiatric problems, and even cancer, why couldn't another parasite that also infects humans, and forms cysts in the brain or other tissues, cause the same problems? Both parasites can lay dormant in the human body, forever. We don't have a way of eliminating them. If you have a dog, you may think your dog doesn't have worms. But deworming medicine only kills worms that are in the intestinal tract. It does not kill larvae that are insisted in your dog's flesh. So, your dog is never completely free of worms. Think about it. If we were able to kill all of the worms in dogs with deworming medicine, then puppies would not be born with worms. After worms are killed by medicine in the intestine, they will be replaced by new worms that are continually migrating out of the flesh. Puppies are born with worms, and they need to be dewormed every two weeks, for a period of time, and then forever as adults, about three times per year, or more. They should also have a fecal test done every year. Is every single dog owner doing this? Even if you are, your dog still has worms, because the ones insisted in its flesh can never be removed. Dogs pick up new worms when they go out because everywhere dogs go is contaminated with Toxocara eggs, from other dogs' excrement. If you have a dog, you are also stepping on this Toxocara contaminated ground, and bringing that back to your home. You are also handling a contaminated, single-use plastic feces bag, and adding that to the Earth's burden of waste. If dewormers worked, dogs would be free from worms, and the soil in the neighborhood would not be contaminated with invisible Toxocara eggs. Dog feces gets rained on, dried by the sun, stepped on, and washed away until the feces is gone. The feces appears to be gone but Toxocara eggs remain in the soil. They require about a month to become infectious, and then, they remain, contaminating the soil for months or years. All a child has to do is play on the ground, or walk on the ground and touch his shoe, to come in contact with the infectious, microscopic eggs, and touch his mouth, to accidentally ingest them. All an adult has to is walk where a dog previously defecated, and then touch his shoe or walk into his home with his shoes. It is recommended that children don't play in areas where dogs are allowed to defecate. But, no one is doing anything about the fact that they are defecating literally everywhere, including playgrounds, sidewalks, beaches, schoolyards, trails, fields, parks, store parking lots, and now, even inside stores. Thank you for listening and I hope you will join me for the next video, which will be continuing the discussion about the risks of dog feces.